What's up everybody? Brett here and I'm back today with some more Battle Brothers news. And as the title says, it's going to be a gunpowder weapons focused dev block. I'm so excited. We have been speculating about this for a long time. Uh, we didn't know the full extent to which gunpowder might be introduced in this next DLC. Uh, we had obviously seen the grenades from early on that got us all pretty hype I'm sure. Three different types of grenades may have been more than most people expected, but check it out. We're going to go through it right now. There's no point in me even speculating based on pictures. Let's just read it together and see what's up. So as you've already learned here, the southern city-states are places where medieval science flourishes. Advancements in medicine, astrology, and alchemy are unlike anything found in the north. You've also learned a good deal about the alchemy part already, but now it's time to look at the finest alchemical achievement, gunpowder weapons. This requires a bit of an introduction, so let's start. Man, we've been speculating so much, and from what I can see already, and I will speculate just for a second, this appears to be almost exactly what I was anticipating. Uh, if gunpowder weaponry ever made it into the game, that it would make it in in the most crude forms possible. And that just is what made sense to me. Basic grenades, that these are not guns, right? These are not these are not rifles, these are not muskets, these are not even blunderbusses. These are sticks with barrels where you can put in gunpowder and projectiles and light it on fire. Not even matchlocks, as from what I can tell. Just lighting it on fire and shooting it out of the end of a barrel. So, whew. Let's see. I, I really want to know the, the specifics. So let's get into it. Introduction. Battle Brothers is set in an era spanning the early to high medieval ages as we move from the Scrimisax to Great Sword and across all the tiers of equipment. There's a few outliers, such as the fencing sword, but by and large this dictates what kind of equipment make its way into the game. And also the reason why, excuse me, a little bit of a, uh, a hiccup there. Also, uh, excuse me, I've been, let me, let me stop for just a second. I've been feeling kind of sick. I don't think it's a uh, coronavirus related, but it's kind of, it's kind of scary to have a cold these days. You know what I'm saying? Let me just get that uh, clear my throat. So, it's also the reason why there isn't any full-blown plate armor available. Naturally, the same restrictions apply to any gunpowder weapons we're going to introduce. Until the Blazing Deserts DLC, the setting was limited to draw inspiration from Europe. Gunpowder weapons weren't much of a thing there at the time, but it doesn't mean that other cultures weren't employing them. The gunpowder weapons we're going to introduce aren't the muskets that many people may immediately think of, because these clearly would fall out of the era that Battle Brothers covers. Instead, they are very early firearms based on what Eastern cultures already had available at the time. Exactly what I said. I think this was 100% the way to go. Very smart. And here we get a cool little picture of what it looks like when they fire. You get like a, like a stream of fire coming out the end. That's pretty sweet. Gunpowder weapons work differently from any other ranged weapons in the game and fill their own niche. Their attack doesn't target individual opponents, but instead hit an area of effect covering multiple tiles and always hit both body and head. Oh, that sounds dangerous. Look at them shooting at these like hyenas or something. These rabid hyenas. Also, differently from any other weapons, the skill of a shooter and the defenses of the target don't determine whether a target is hit at all, but rather for how much damage it is hit. The higher the skill of a shooter, the more damage a target receives. That's interesting. That's interesting. I, I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. Uh, you don't need a ton of skill to point and shoot these. That's kind of why uh, guns themselves are considered the great equalizers in terms of combat. But the more damage, I don't know exactly how much sense that makes, but it's definitely a way to do it. The higher the defenses of a target, the less damage it receives. For example, while you'll have a hard time dodging a load of shrapnel being shot at you in its entirety, a shield offers good protection against it, and will reduce any damage you might otherwise take. So I love shield builds. Uh, that that seems to be the way to go. Perhaps if you cannot, if you really can't dodge it, then and all you can do is reduce the damage. We'll have to see how much damage is reduced. Obviously, that's the big question. And this is a pretty unique uh, hit pattern as well. This kind of like square here, this rhombus <laughs> of death. Yeah, we'll have to see. Who knows what the range will be. Perhaps it's a, it's a sort of short range, medium range type weapon. We'll have to see. I think if you give it 
Especially this weapon here looks to be the more powerful. I see this is considered the Fire Lance. So burning kind of a theme with that. Uh, I would expect this to not have an incredibly long range. But we'll see. Because it's important to understand the area of effect an attack with a gunpowder weapon will cover, not least to avoid friendly fire, we revised how these are displayed in the game. No matter if a tile is empty or not, you'll always see which tiles are in the line of fire. Naturally, this goes for any melee attacks already in the game as well. So with that said, let's take a closer look at the gunpowder weapons available for you to use. I mean, that's cool. That's like a nice little quality of life change that'll help uh, perhaps newer players understand uh, where their shots are going. So very cool. All right, the Fire Lance is an explosive charge mounted on a wooden stick. Once ignited, it will spew fire in a straight line covering multiple tiles in front of the shooter. It has limited range, but can still be safely fired from the back line without hitting your own men. Victims caught in the jet of fire may suffer one of the new burning injuries. Yeah, we talked about burning injuries a while back. Um, doesn't appear like they're going into any more detail, but I guess we can kind of see what's up. Burnt face, burnt leg, uh, scorched lungs, burnt hand, and who knows what this is. Just totally burnt. <laughs> totally burnt. Um... I was about to say, is it a single use? Because that's what this looks like. Uh, the Fire Lance is a single use in combat, after which it is burned out and useless. Like throwing weapons, it is automatically refilled after each battle and can be used again in the next one. Fire Lances are particularly useful to soften enemy ranks in deep formation as they're able to set ablaze opponents in their back lines that are out of reach of most pole arms or great swords and are guaranteed to hit. The conscripted armies of city-states regularly make use of them before battle lines clash. That is terrifying. Um, I don't know what we can do to mitigate the damage of the fire lands. I don't know if shields help there. Uh, but I, all I was thinking about this was right off the bat. I was like, oh man, the black monolith fight. When they start coming in, you know, 40 deep right in front of you. And then like 20 on the top. You could just start punching big holes in the lines right off the start and if it doesn't require a ton of skill to use like everyone hits with it this might be an incredibly oppressive uh weapon i don't know if the undead will be able to receive the undead currently don't receive normal injuries right but can they receive burns good question perhaps so the hand gone i think is how you pronounce that hand gone not exactly a handgun. It might be easier for me just to call it the handgun. Because that's basically what it's a predecessor of. And maybe that is how you pronounce that. Handgun? Perhaps. I'm just going to call it the handgun for now. Feel free to correct my pronunciation. Uh, I'm always more interested in saying it correctly. But uh, for expedience, the handgun is a massive cast iron cannon with a wooden handle. It fires shrapnel in a cone and can hit multiple targets with one shot for devastating damage but at less range than either bow or crossbow. Exactly, that's what I figured. So similar to a crossbow, it has to be reloaded after every shot with shrapnel and powder carried in the ammunition slot. As it is heavier and more cumbersome to reload than even a crossbow, a character carrying a handgun cannot fire, reload, and move in the same turn. That's a pretty good um, series of restrictions. I was talking to someone in the comment section yesterday uh, about what it would take for a gunpowder weapon to be balanced. Because you want it to have, you know, greatly increased damage or some sort of capability. I don't know how much more effective a very primitive uh, gunpowder weapon is than, let's say, a perfected uh, heavy crossbow or a, you know, a war bow with in the hands of a master, you know, bowman. Like, as far as like kill, pure killing efficiency, it seems like they're all kind of ranked in the same tier, just where gunpowder weapons would be technologically more advanced they might not necessarily be uh more efficient at doing the job of killing a man at range right uh, for instance a guy with a, a bow a long bow can kill a guy from super far away especially if he's standing still uh and a crossbow was a huge game changer in medieval combat where all of a sudden um the guys in plate armor who already were a little bit scared of getting hit with a long bow um, because it could punch through some of their plate, now are like definitely getting shredded by peasants who just pick up a crossbow, figure out how to shoot it real quick, and then all of a sudden they're killing trained warriors uh, on, on horseback wearing like 100 pounds of, of plate and mail. So, gunpowder, however, 
We'll we'll just have to see. It'll still be something. It seems like that only a ranged brother will want to use uh, because it will dictate how much damage it does. Yeah, and you, it's like you're gonna want to have maybe one or two, depending on your you know what kind of builds come out of this. You're gonna want to have like one or two dedicated handgun guys, and how they work, you know, we'll have to see. Maybe there's some strats where you can almost do like a firing line, right? Have a front line of handgunners instead of putting all your range in the back, put them in the front. Have your back line be your melee and have them use rotation after the first volley. Bring them to the front. And then have your your uh, handgun guys reload in the back line. That would be really cool visually. I don't know if that works out practically. Um, and it definitely will take you a while to get to that sort of strategy. But very cool idea perhaps. So it looks like they're also going to need to carry two. Uh, so not just a bag of ammo or a quiver like you would do. Or a quiver of bolts or quiver of arrows. Uh, but you also need to have gunpowder. So it will take up two slots. So... You can't really have a backup weapon. It seems like. I guess that's the thing. That's the idea, perhaps. <clears throat> we'll see exactly how that works once we get it into game. So let's read the last little paragraph here. The handgun excels against multiple lightly armored targets, but can also be effectively employed for damaging several more heavily armored targets at once. Because the handgun covers a wide cone, Start positioning and watching out for friendly fire is important, or smart positioning rather. Used right, it can quickly even the odds if overwhelmed by superior enemy numbers. After all, the more enemies, the more targets to hit, and any target thus hit may suffer both piercing and burning injury. So, sounds devastating. Um, let's see. It looks like there might be two modes of fire from what this says. Maybe there's a a tighter grouping and a wider grouping. The wider grouping perhaps being more armor piercing is how I'm reading that. That could be incorrect. Maybe it only has one mode of fire, which would also make sense. Um, yeah, and I, I like the injury side of it. That's cool. Uh, watching out for friendly fire makes sense. Um, this type of weapon would be weird if there wasn't friendly fire. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if there's much more I can extrapolate, guys, but very cool. Uh, and even I like that they're sneaking in the, the first view of the the hyena enemies here. Any other thing that I can pick apart here? I don't think so. But guys, I'm so happy to finally see the gunpowder weapons making it into the game. I'm curious if it's the iteration of gunpowder weapons that you guys were expecting or wanting. Uh, for me, this is perfect. Uh, I didn't want too much more than this. This is basically the handgun. It is probably the exact weapon that I was imagining when I thought of gunpowder weapons. Basic, basic grenades are what I was thinking of as well. And fire lances are also pretty perfect. Um, I want to say, I don't know. Unfortunately, I don't know enough history of early, early uh, gunpowder weapons to, to speak as an authority, that's for sure. But to speak super confidently. I think in China, they were using things very similar to this. I know, uh, I want to say like uh, parts of Turkey and stuff, they had they had large, they were already producing large like cannons, like single cast, like siege breaking cannons, but I don't know, I don't know like in terms of portable handheld weapons at this time, uh, this would probably be the extent of it, if even this, but very cool, happy to see this stuff making into the game. Obviously, the guys who make Battle Brothers, guys and gals who make it, uh, understand balancing. And I'm sure that they'll, they've already figured out the numbers, they've figured out the stats, right? And ways to make these weapons balance. I have, I have almost complete faith in the developers because they've made a great game. And if, if you're out there and you don't like gunpowder weapons, I guess what I'm trying to do is sell you on it. Um, I'd be very curious to know why you would not be interested in something like this, but I have to imagine most of you are, because it just adds a completely new strategic dynamic to the game, which I'm always all about. So, that's going to be it for me today. Pardon my uh, kind of flimminess. I'm actually finding it kind of hard to breathe right now. I'm going to go ahead and take some medicine and, and relax. My wife is actually also leaving today uh, for, um, well, she's going to help her mother. Her mother's uh, got a broken, broken ankle, I believe right now and some other things as well. And she's trying to sell her house. She's trying to get the house ready. She's going to be trying to fix it so that she can move down here, uh, to Texas. 
and uh, be closer to us. But it's it's quite the process, and all this stuff was planned in advance before the coronavirus outbreak. So travel right now is sketchy. So she's going to be driving from Texas to California. Uh, my kids are starting online school uh, as of yesterday. Um, I have online classes myself, so it's become a huge it's become a huge thing. And then meanwhile, my puppy is crazy. So. <laughs> Anyway, guys, I'll see y'all in the next one. Uh, look forward to next week's dev blog. Who knows what we're getting next week. If we're even getting anything, it doesn't really say about next week what we should expect to see. Uh, but these have all been very informative and super fun. Uh, but without any further ado, guys, I'm Brett. My channel is Good Talk Gaming. Hope you out there are all doing great and continue to do great. Stay safe. And, uh, yeah, see you guys.